Hey there, everybody. So we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of animation here in Unity. Uh, so what I've got here is I've just got a really cool little sewer set from from um, Decksoft Games. I forget their new name, 3D Models and Textures, I think. And what I want to do for right now is I'm going to add a doorway. Or there is a doorway. I'm going to add a door right here. And I'm going to have the door swing open. Uh, move, slide open would basically be the exact same thing I'm going to do, but the swing open allows us to deal with a couple other things. So I'm going to do this within Unity in this version. And in the next version, in, in part two of this video, I will take another door and load it up into Maya and animate it in there. And in the last uh, part of this uh, tutorial, I will go ahead and add a little UI to this one, you know, kind of a hold the button to open the door type thing and see how that goes. So let's just jump in and get started. So I've already added a couple of things I'm going to need here. I've got uh, animation clips, uh, animation animator controller, prefabs, and scripts folders added. So I'm going to drop, 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 drop. I'm going to drop the door that I want to use out here. Boom. And the door I want is going to be this door one right. I want to make a couple changes to it. Uh, by default, its rig is set to none because it doesn't have any animations on it. It makes sense. Well, I'm going to change this to a generic rig and hit apply. And this generic rig is going to, for one thing, it's going to give me this avatar down here. And this avatar is what I use to link in an animator controller, which what is what I then use to, uh, bas basically the animator controller is where I can build my state machine for my animations. I tie that into my object and yeah, that's just what I want to do. But notice it when I added the avatar, I also got this take 001. And basically, it tried to import some animations. Well, there aren't any, so I'm going to go ahead and tell it don't import and hit apply on that. And you can see that got rid of that. Cool. So let's go ahead and throw this door out here. So I'm going to grab the door and drop it out here. I'm going to change the name of it to rotating door, like so. And let's get it positioned. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to select that door frame. So that way I can just kind of copy its uh, position, copy component, and then go back to my rotating door where I can then do a click the gear again and do a paste component values. Gets me pretty close, gets me in the ballpark. Now I want you to notice something. As I rotate this, notice the door is rotating around a central pivot point. This is something I'm going to have to adjust to get this to really work correctly. And won't be a big deal. We'll get that taken care of. Let's go ahead and drop this down. And what do you think? Move it forward a little bit? Yeah. Let's slide it forward just a little bit. Okay. All right. So we've got our door basically in place. Slide it back a little smidge, smidge or two. Right about there. Okay. So our door is pretty much in place. I'm going to need a couple of pieces on my door. Uh, so for number one, I'm going to come down here and I open up this door. Notice it has a camera, directional light, and texture group. I don't need any of those. Now, whatever mesh you're working with may or may not have those. If it doesn't have those, then just ignore what I did. But in my situation, I had those uh, extra component, extra pieces attached there that I don't need. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and make a prefab out of this rotating door and drop it into my prefabs, like so. Pretty nice. All right, next up, first thing, let's add a box collider to our our uh, mesh just to make sure that the player can't run through it. So that will be a collider, box collider. There we go. And then on our parent object, which has the animator controller, we're going to add a, I'm going to add a sphere collider to this one. And the reason I'm doing a sphere is the sphere will maintain its shape as it rotates, whereas the a box as it rotates if the player is standing like right here it's possible for the box collider to rotate out of the way and try to start closing the door again uh, there's several things I can do to like try to avoid that or prevent that from happening but for ease of use you know it's not like you can see this sphere it's not like this is going to be really computationally expensive so I'm just going to use this sphere collider increase its radius some Maybe something like that. That looks pretty nice. I like that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make it a trigger. Let's go ahead and apply this to our prefab. Let's make sure our player is tagged as a player. 
player is tagged as a player that's good uh, okay so we are set up to start constructing our animation good so let's go ahead and go to yeah that sounded overly excited let's go to window and um, my animation window so this is going to be my animation window I'm gonna drop it down here to the bottom here now if you've ever done any keyframe animation this is the exact same essential kind of situation, same type of stuff. Uh, so I'm going to start off by, uh, so notice animating, to begin animating rotating door, so it knows what object I've got selected. I could select another object to begin animating room 7. Yeah, that might be a little bit queasy. So I need to create an animation clip. All right, so I'm going to hit create, and I want to save this somewhere so I'm gonna put this in my animation clips folder I made and I'm gonna call this uh, door rotate no I'm just gonna yeah rotating door open uh, the more descriptive your naming can be the better off things are going to be later on now notice what happened over here in my animation clips folder it gave me this thing right here this rotating door thing if I double click it, this is Mechanim. This is my animation, my animator controller. Uh, I would rather have this down here in my animator controller folder. So I'm just going to grab it out of there and drop it right down there. No big deal. And we'll come back to this screen here in just a couple of minutes. Go back to my scene. And it also created this clip that I'm working on. All right. So down here, I'm inside my, um, my keyframe editor, if you will. I want to go ahead and, oops, notice I can't do anything. That's because this thing, if I select other stuff, it goes away. But if I select the door again, it's ready. It, it wants me to be doing stuff for the door. So let's go ahead and make sure the door is selected. Uh, that, that made no sense. It, it just it wants to be making animations. Uh, since I'm currently working on the door, I need to go ahead and select the door. I'm going to add a property. So I have several properties that I can deal with. I can do some stuff with the mesh. You know, I can animate the mesh being on or off, make like some kind of flickering ghost holographic thing. Personally, I think that'd be easier to do in code, but it can be animated. Uh, so what I want to work with is actually going to be the position. So I'm going to add position components to what I'm going to animate. And you see I have a rotation X, Y, and Z. It gave me starting keyframes right here, and it also gave me and it gave me these values. These are my starting values. And if I come over here to the end, it gave me ending values, which are the exact same. Now, I don't really care about these end ones, so I'm going to go ahead and delete those. All right. Now, I want my key, my animation. I'm going to go like 30 frames. So I click over here, 30 frames, or I could type it in right up here so that I go to 30 frames, whichever one I want. You know, if I type 25, see how that jumps me over to uh, frame 25. So I'm going to go to frame 30 here, and I'm going to go ahead and create my animation. I want you to notice a couple of things. Uh, up, up here, notice that my rotation is um, highlighted, and that's because I have keyframes for that. I have data for that. Also notice my animator is kind of highlighted as well. Uh, so when I go to record this, I'll just hit the record button here. And this this is kind of like in Maya or 3ds Max where you can just record and move things around and it will create your keyframes for you. So you can see now my rotation is up here. So if I were to move this, notice it added in keyframe data for a position. Even though I didn't already have that, it went ahead and added that. So it, it, if that's what you want to do, that becomes really useful. Uh, but what I actually want to do is rotate the door. So I'll go to my rotation, and just to make sure I stay on this, I'm going to rotate. Not that way. Ah, so remember, I, I pointed out that we're going to have an issue because of where the uh, pivot point was. And you can see this rotation is going to go around the middle. Not what I want at all. So let's go ahead and stop our recording. See, it didn't store any keyframe information. That is fine. Let's play around with this up here. So I've got this object right here, which has all my animation stuff on it. And then I've got the actual door mesh itself. Now, if I move my door mesh so that my door, what I want to pivot on the door is lined up with the pivot point of the parent object, then 
if the parent object rotates, the uh, mesh, the door, will rotate around that point. And I see that the rotating door, its pivot point is right there in the middle. So I'm going to grab this mesh. And I'm going to see if I can't get the edge of this to line up with that. The way I'm going to do that is I'm ballparking that if I get my pivot point of the mesh over here on the edge of the door frame, that should put the door in the middle because the doorway should be split in half roughly. That's what I'm ballparking. So let's try this. Let's come over right about, I think right about there. Let's select our rotating door. There's the pivot point, mesh, rotating door. So the whole point of that, now watch, if I rotate this, see how the door is rotating the way that I want it to. Let's undo that. Uh, the problem is it's now not really lined up. No big deal. Let's slide rotating door over this way. Something like so. That looks fairly good. All right, now back into our animation. So now we're going to go back down here. We're going to record. Let's go to rotation. I'm going to rotate this way. What do you think? About like that? I don't know if that's going too far or not. Is there anything to hit back there? No, not really. Yeah, it's going into the wall just a little bit. I don't know that I really care, but I'm going to pretend I care. Bring it back some. There we go. Good enough. And then I will stop my rotation. Like so. Or I'm sorry, start, stop my recording. And now if I scrub this back and forth here, you can see we have a, an, an animation going on. Let's go to our animation clip right over here. Key thing here, by default, it's going to want to loop. So I'm going to go ahead and turn looping off so it doesn't loop. And we are now ready to set this up. So actually, I need one more thing. Well, you'll see this one more thing once we go into the uh, animator. So I'm going to double click my um, rotating door AC so I'm inside the animator here. Notice it has an entry point. This is a state machine. So if you're used to state machine, same basic idea. Entry point is a start, so once it starts, it automatically has to go to some state. So it automatically goes to the rotating door open state. I would rather it didn't do that. I would rather it go to just a door closed or door idle state, you know, something like that. So let's go back to our scene view. Let's select our door again. And right down here in our animation where we have this rotating door open, let's go ahead and click that and create a new clip. I'm going to call this one Rotating Door Closed. Okay, Rotating Door Closed. I'm going to add a property. And the property I'm going to add is going to be my rotation property again. I'll come back out here to frame 60. And I'm going to go ahead and just kill that, delete that key. Don't need that. All right, let's go to Rotating Door Closed. Uh, whether it loops or not is largely irrelevant. I'm going to turn it off because I've really only got one frame. There's really no point in looping it. All that is is really just a placeholder to keep the door closed. So now let's go to our animator. Uh, let's rotating door close. I'm going to right click that and make that my, my default state like so. And I want to now be able to transition from this state up to rotating door open. So let's right click, make a transition, and off we go. Now, the way these transitions work, by default, they will have this has exit time, which means that they will, it will exit the previous transition whenever it is done animating and go on to the next one. I don't want it to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And once I do that, I get this warning here saying, I got to have a reason to transition. If, if it's not because this one finished, then you've got to put something down here in the conditions for why I'm, li I'm leaving. So we're going to go over here to our parameters, and we're going to go ahead and create a parameter for this. So I will go to uh, this plus sign to create a parameter. Try it again. Plus sign. Plus sign. There we go. And I can use either a float, int, bool, or trigger. A bool is true, false. A trigger is basically you can think of it as saying, go do that. And then the uh, animator controller uses up that trigger. So once it leaves this animation, that trigger is then reset and ready to be turned back on. So a trigger is like a shortened version of a bool. Uh, with the trigger, you don't have to, in your code, 
reset it because it'll automatically be reset in here. So bool and trigger, somewhat interchangeable, uh, not really, but somewhat. You can kind of view them as very similar. So I'm going to use the trigger here. I'm going to call this trigger open door. And then I'm going to go over here to my transition. Transition list is empty, so let's go ahead and hit this plus, and it automatically added the only parameter I have there. If I click down, I would be able to select more if I had others. So, cool. All right, so let's, 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 uh, let's do some stuff here then. Um, what do I want to do? Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, okay. So I am now going to create a little script. So let's go to our scripts folder. Let's go with a create C sharp script. And I'm going to call this um, door animation trigger. There we go. I could just call call it animation trigger and just use this one for like all animation triggering, but I, I think I'd rather really break these down and you know have scripts that are just focused on specific things. So let's go ahead and reload this. There we go. So this is my door animation trigger. I'm going to need a couple of things. One is going to be a reference to my animator. So that'll be animator dot animator space, and then I'm going to call it my anim. I could call it my animator if you like. And then I'm going to do a public string. Oh, what's this is going to be my um, my uh, I was going to say trigger parameter, but yeah, let's do that. Trigger parameter. Uh, basically, what what thing is it am I wanting to trigger? So if I come over here, you know, what, what parameter am I wanting to trigger over there? All right, so let's bring this back up. So in my start, let's go get a reference to my animator equals get, get component animator. Boom, boom, there we go. And then down here, let's do a void on trigger enter it fills everything in for me except i don't like calling this other i don't know why it just bugs me so i'm going to rename this to col there we go and now i'm going to say if col dot game object dot tag equals so if the thing that has collided with me is a player i want to do something what do i want to do i want to do my animator dot set trigger what trigger do I want to set? Well, my trigger parameter is what I want to set. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and attach this script to our object out here. So that's my, oops, compiling. There we go. So let's attach it to my rotate door here. So I'm going to hit door animation, boom. Trigger parameter is going to be open door. Okay, cool, cool. Now, let's go ahead and I'm going to end up changing some of this stuff here in a minute. Uh, you know, that's something don't don't feel like you have to design this exactly right your first go. Sometimes when you're as you build it, you get one part working. It's like, oh, cool. And then you try to get the next part working. You discover, oh, I need to do this a little bit different. Well, that's fine. Do it different. Time. Uh, OK, so here I am. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead. Does my door open? Ooh, boy, that door opens fast, doesn't it? So it opened. Uh, but it doesn't close. All right, I want it to close. So let's see here. Let's go back to our animator. So I would like to have basically another one of these. Come on, get up here. I'd like to have another one of these right here. Uh, let's see. Can I just... So what I can do is rotating door open. I'm going to grab rotating door open right here, drag it out here. Let's add a transition, right click, make transition, bring it down here, boom, like so. And then I'm going to make a transition from there back up to there. So this one is going to be set to exit time. So when this is done, it's going to go up here. Now I've got to figure out uh, what's going to cause me to transition from there to there. Well, you know what would work best? Instead of having an open door, let's do a, let's make a new parameter. Let's do a bool. And I'm going to say, is, is, door, open. 
that's what I'm going to use. Boom! So I'm going to use is door open. So now down here, this transition from door open to door door open one. Oops, go away. Let's change this one. Let's add something. Not open door. Let's go to is door open. I'm going to set this to false. And then I'm going to come up to this transition, open door. Let's change that to is door open. And let's leave that as true. So now in my code, I can set it to true and cause it to open, set it to false, cause it to close. And once it's done closing, it'll go up here. I do have one thing to do. And that is I want my speed to be negative one. So that way it runs in reverse. And I'm also going to change the name. So instead of rotating door open zero, I'm going to say rotating door close. There we go. All right, so all of this should be set up. Let's go back into our code. And well, let's do a little cleanup. Let's grab open door right there, which we're not using, and we'll delete that. And now let's go back into our code down here. And so, so we use this my animator set trigger. Okay, that's not what I'm going to use this time. I just changed it. This time it's going to be a set bool. Okay, with the set bool, notice I need what am I setting? Uh, you know, what is the name that I want to set and name of the parameter I want to set and what is the value I want to give it? Well, the name of the parameter is still going to be that variable I created up there. Trigger parameter. Difference here. Oops. No quotes. Pay attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> Trigger parameter. There we go. And then the value I want to give it. Well, in this case, it's going to be true. I want to go ahead and open. Let's come down here and let's do a void on trigger exit. I'll leave it as other this time. If other dot game object dot tag equals player, I will do a my animator dot set bool, not trigger, set bool trigger parameter, comma, false. So uh, you, you can see us starting to tie in our programming class in here. You know, this is not terribly complex code. We've done a lot of get, anim get components in there. We've done a lot of uh, variable types. We used on collision enter. Well, now we're using on trigger enter. We've done game objects. Uh, so it, you can see that really, and, and we're familiar with the dot operator as well. So and parameters. So you know, all, it's simply a case of how do I use this stuff? How, what, what method do I need to call? I guess is what I was trying to say there. That made no sense. That was terrible. Okay, so we'll save that. And let's come back into here. And let's see what happens. Oops, notice this one has an exit time. That one right there. Exit time is checked. Let's uncheck that. So it only uses our parameter down there. Parameter. Parameter. I got an error. No, I did not get an error. Never mind. It went away. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's see if our door will open and close. So we'll turn here. Open door. No, no. My door did not open. Let's take a look. Let's figure out what's going on with our door here. So is door open is going to be true. Let's see. Player. Go ahead and apply this to my prefab. Open door. Did I break my code? My animator component. See you. Oops, that was my email, which just popped up on the other screen. I was like, whoa, where'd that come from? Uh-huh. Oh, this parameter, it doesn't exist anymore right here. We change it to is door open. So let's go down here and we'll do is door open Boink. just had to change my uh, value for my trigger parameter right there in the inspector and so you can start to see the value of that I can put this script on other things and all I have to do is give it the name of the parameter I want to use and off it goes I mean limited other things but some other things all right let's see what we get this time let's run over here open woohoo does it close oh it closes and it opens and it closes <laughs> Yeah, we're just going to do this over and over again. Does it close? Oh, no, it closed. Let me in. Let me out. Ow, it hit me. That hurt. <laughs> yeah, it hits me pretty hard. 
Uh, probably got to do something about that. I mean, that's whacking me pretty hard right there. Uh, I wonder if we should have a different... Well, I mean, if we wanted to animate it differently for the inside, we could. But I've got an idea. Let's do something. So what I want to do is... Let's go back into here. I'm going to create another... I'm going to do this as a public game object. Ah, uh, do I want to do this though? No, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go into coroutines and all of that kind of stuff. Let's not do that. Okay, so there you go. My animation is working. Uh, perhaps an easier, yeah. So the animation is working. <laughs> just stop the animation works. Uh, so yeah, any questions, just let me know. And um, otherwise, I'm next video. What I'm going to do is go ahead and create a little UI for this. I think that should be pretty nice. And see what, see what we can do on that. All right. So have a good day.